Good morning. Let's get to it. The book talk on missional church. Daryl Gutter. Let's pray. Father, uh, it's an impossible task. Maybe I need three hours for this, but I'll do it in 15 minutes. <laughs> Help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. No, really, this is so funny. Because I uh, did book talk in Korean already. Uh, I got 29 minutes and 25 seconds to do that. Because that's how GBS uh, Global Radio allows me to have weekly 29 minutes, 25 seconds. Because they fill in the uh, front end and back end. But this book, Missional Church by Daryl Gutta, was uh, introduced to me a long time ago, and I had this book for many years. And then Jenny sends me this article by Daryl Goddard, The Church as a Missional Community, saying that, honey, I need to read 15-page paper and have to write a five-page essay uh, and send it into Fuller uh, Doctoral Ministry Program to see if I could handle the academic rigor of demon. If I don't do a good job, I cannot get in. So can you read? So I did. I read and it was so interesting. Um, this article led me to the book that I already had that led me to the Korean book that I received 2019 from a professor who was a professor Fuller, uh, wrote a book subsequent to this in Korean with his added and as David Goddard talks about Soren Kierkegaard, I start rereading the Soren Kierkegaard's attack on Christendom. So that's why I said, I don't know if I, had, I could do this in 15 minutes, but maybe I'll do another full uh, session on missional churches. But this is how he writes. Daryl Gooder writes this article. The date is not in indicated, so I don't know when. But this book was 1998. The research project that generated the book Missional Church, published in 1998, must held accountable, it appears, for the rapid spread of the term missional in many circles of discussion dealing with the situation of the church in North America. <laughs> he got scared. He got scared. Why? Because it became so popular, everybody's talking about it and using it, the term, without really... What does that mean, missional church? Well, he doesn't define it that way. But unfortunately, the misabuse of it has become more rampant and has become more widespread and more popular than what he's trying to say. Right? Um, for example, and I, this is from a personal level, I was at uh, Bible College at Cambodia teaching on a dependency issue. The church should really become independent, financially at least, so that uh, you won't depend on missionaries' money. Uh, well, this one of the students who has been in ministry probably 10 more years, 10 years or more, says, that's why we need to do missional church. I said, I stopped him. I said, what do you mean by that? Well, sir, you know, every church should be missional. Yeah, I understand that, but what is your definition? Well, you know, well, we need to help the poor and, you know, all that. I'm like, okay, how many years you've been in ministry? Uh, 10 years. How many people you have? About 70. How much offering do you take per month? About 100. But you've been supported by Korean missionary for 300,000 a month for the last 10 years. And are you saying that now for you to be missional, now you need to give receive thousand dollars so you could give away? You know? So their understanding of missional is so unreal. Uh, and and for example, I was at a church, I won't say which church, you know, just split. And they talk about missional church and they invite all the missionary to their church and they're celebrating and and actually, it was so funny because I look at the banner and uh, one of the speaker was from Cambodia. That's the guy that I know. I, really, he comes to my neighborhood in America, speaks there, representing Cambodia. I'm like, wow, but that's the church I preached at and ministered. And they don't support me, but they support him. Maybe I'm upset about that. But <laughs> the bulletin, and I'm like, hmm, so how is this missional? 
the Korean congregation, and I won't release how many people attend the church, but that Sunday, offering was $63,000. So if you study uh, church growth principle and all that, which I did at Fuller, and so you just simply multiply average Sunday, not Thanksgiving, not Christmas, just average humdrum Sunday offering, multiply that by 52 is your budget. So if you are collecting 60, 36, 63,000 per week, normally, then your annual budget is around 3.3 with special thing. They're looking at about $4 million budget church. And I said, wow, that's impressive. Maybe they're doing a lot of mission work with that. And then my eyes land on, wait a minute, but the English ministry there that week raised $314. I'm like, huh? So their country, the English ministry contribution to the entire church is 0.5%, not even 1%. So how is that church missional? <laughs> right? Uh, they haven't even evangelized their own next generation. So that's kind of you run into this kind of oxymoron situation where everybody is a fashion to, you know, it was fashion about church growth. It was fashion to be purpose driven. It's fashion to be missional. And, but they don't really get at to get, at understand what it means. So Daryl Gutter, Gutter, I said, how do you, G U D R, Gutter, I guess Gutter, uh, said, oh, we need to make some reasonable because missional you is being used everywhere. And then he writes, the term missional is an attempt to move the discussion beyond too narrow definition of mission as merely one among the various program of the church and to find way to think about church calling practice today in light of the fact that multicultural global church, what and Archbishop Temple famously called the great new fact of our time. So he's Argument is that, well, 1991, David Bosch wrote a monumental book, monumental book on transforming, uh, transforming mission paradigm shift in theology of mission, 1991. And then he got into accident and he died at early age. And but so he's kind of like, wow, everybody wished that he lived and developed more further. But this book, this thick, thick book, if you're writing a PhD on mission, you must include him into your bibliography. You must. If you don't include him, then the professor will ask, have you read David Bosch's book? If you say no, it'll be like, yeah, I studied New Testament, but I didn't read Matthew. Yeah, I, Matthew, I skip. I just, it's like that. It's it, the monumental book. You must read it. So 1991, he writes the book and he quote. So this David Bosch uh, co quotation is in this book and also subsequently 1919, 1918, 2018, Professor Lee Sang-hun, as I was meeting him, he gave me his this thick book. Um, he taught at Fuller. Now he's some dean, he's like chancellor at some uh, Bible college. And so we're going to soon meet. But he gave me this book and he quotes David Bosch saying that that's the central thing. 1991, David Bosch wrote this book and this quote, and then the six authors of theologians are trying to come out and try to deal with this. This is a quotation. Let me read. Mission is understood as being derived from the very nature of God. It is thus put in the context of the doctrine of Trinity not of the ecclesi ecclesiology or soteriolog soteriology. The classical doctrine of Missio Dei is God the Father sending the Son, and God the Father and the Son sending the Spirit is expanded into to include yet another movement, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit sending the church into the world. Wow. So what is Missio Dei, God's mission? understood in the context of mission is 
God the Creator sends His Son to the world. And when He resurrects, Father and the Son sends the Holy Spirit God. Remember Jesus said, the paracletus cannot come until I go up. Now this triune God now is sending the church, ecclesi 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 Ecclesia, to the world. And that's what mission is. So in that new understanding was radical. Why? Because the Western civilization considered itself formerly and officially Christian. This legacy may be described as the Constantinian system because this pre presumption was seeded in the 4th century when Roman Emperor Constantine granted the Christian church special favors and privileges. In subsequent centuries, the Christian church shaped the religious and cultural life of all Europe. The centuries, the cultures that resulted in Europe and later in North America are called Constantinian or Christendom or technically the Corpus Christantinum in this book. So, guess what? So that was rampant in the world, and especially Europe and North America. That's where Soren Kierkegaard comes on, 18, 1840s, 1830s. He was, Kierkegaard was born 1813. I have it in my cup. 1813, and he died 1855. You see that cup right there? That's the age there. So before he died, this was the latest book he wrote. So he wrote this in 1950s. It's called Attack on Christendom. He's attacking the whole point. A nation cannot be saved. The very thing that, uh, that prevented uh, uh, people from being missional, because they said, well, we're a national Christian nation. Well, America is a Christian nation. Well, you're coming to America as a missionary? What the heck? We sent you missionary. Well, 1960s already, Korea was sending missionary to North America, right? Because they understood what mission is. It's not, you cannot say by a nation, right? Wow. This is fa fascinating. So this book basically talks about how um, mission happens and at, uh, nations through culture. He writes, we recognize the term culture is exceptionally difficult to define. Neither Canada nor United States one single culture. Rather, they are themselves complex of diverse and interwoven cultural tradition that are constantly forming new and challenging expression. Wow, it is so true. Because in 1979, when I went to Berkeley, taking Asian American story history, they said, yeah, we gave up on melting pot theory. We cannot be one. There's no way. And we don't insist people to assimilate. The word assimilation was used to use the principle of melting pot. Well, let's be all together, so let's assimilate. No, rather now it's a salad bowl. Now we acculturate. We recognize shrimp uh, to be shrimp, uh, to be on top of uh, salad and mushroom. There's lettuce, there's carrot. We all different, but let's all put it together like a salad bowl. So they are trying to understand on uh, that aspect of mission. So this book, which I don't have time to go through every part, but basically argue missional ecclesiology is biblical, number one. Number two, missional ecclesiology is historical. It's in the history. Number three, missional ecclesiology is contextual. As I was saying, it's salad bowl. A missional ecclesiology is eschatolo eschatological. See that? Using this term there. So unnecessary. Jesus is coming back and where mission are need to be done by church to usher in the end coming of Jesus. Finally, five, missional ecclesiastics can be practiced, that is, can be translated into practice. It's not just theory for you to talk about, right? Um, and in this article, he writes, and this is a part that I, I was telling Jenny Oh, you should read this book because that's not what Kierkegaard is really saying. But anyways, he writes, The process of theological reorientation has been emerging for a long time. Although the Reformation does not generate an explicit missional theology for Christendom, the first resource for such theology can be traced in Ruther's vision of priesthood of the old believers and Calvin's radical understanding of God's grace affecting 
effecting our justification, our forgiveness and sanctification in inextricably intertwined process that generates public witness affecting very area of the community's life. It advances in Kierkegaard's attack upon Christendom. And then I'm thinking, really? Hmm. Theological reorientation happens on this book? Hmm. I wonder if that will happen. So basically, he drops it. And then there's a, a footnote. So I thought maybe he'll explain in the footnote, but he just footnotes this book. Right? It didn't make any sense to him. So I don't know if reorientation of the theology is what Soren Kierkegaard was going at in this book. But that's for, I'm trying to put three books and an article in 15 minutes. And that's already 16 minutes past. So if you're interested, go get that book, Missional Church, Daryl Gada. And if you're really interested in, yeah, true mission happens when individual accepts Christ, get Soren Kierkegaard, Attack on Christendom. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. Mwah.